Welcome to Silver Linings, your resource for silver, gray, and white wig reviews. Hey everyone, I'm Angela. Welcome to Silver Linings. And it's time for another edition of Saturday School, my feature where I share wig wisdom and wig knowledge. Today we're going to talk about wig cap construction. So when I was watching wig videos, wig review videos, when I first started to explore the world of wigs, I would hear terms like monofilament. Not just monofilament, but monofilament top, monofilament part, monofilament crown. I mean, what? I, I don't know what a monofilament is. When, when I heard the word filament, I would think of the thing that goes inside the light bulb, <laughs> filament. So that word was really, really confusing to me. I don't know about you, but for me, that word was very confusing. And there are words like double mono top, lace front. That one is not too hard to figure out, although it was hard for me to understand how to put on a lace front wig. That's another video. Hand-tied wigs. Wow. And then finally, wefting. What is this wefting? So we're going to go into some detail on those four terms. I'm going to share some screens with you, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a pretty good handle on what those terms mean for you. So I really encourage you, don't buy any more wigs until you understand these terms. If you already understand these terms, then you pretty much could click right out of this video, except that I hope that you would like it and share it with someone else who may need that information, maybe someone you know who's a new wig wearer. Okay, let's start with monofilament, that big long word that really just kind of confused me. I'm gonna the great thing about a monofilament top is that it gives the illusion, you hear reviewers say all the time, it gives the illusion of scalp. And it's just a great big piece of fabric called monofilament that allows you to part the wig anywhere where the monofilament is. You can part it in the middle, you can part it on the left, you can part it on the right. So let's take a look here. And you can see it's going to it's going to go very fast but it gives you a wonderful wonderful look without any hair or anything what this monofilament looks like and of course that's the rest of the the wig cap so you see that it's really this whole area right in here see my mouse going all around the scalp on the left hand side in all of that area, you could part your hair in the middle, in the left, in the right, and that is the beauty of a monofilament top. Full mono. You'll hear them say full monofilament, sometimes just mono top. Let's take another look at a video from wigs.com that really shows and explains very well what a monofilament top is. Monofilament wigs are made by tying or sewing the hair in sections into the top portion of the cap, which is made from a very fine sheer material known as the monofilament. Synthetic hairs and human hairs are generally hand tied and knotted individually into a sheer material. This allows each of the tied hairs to be parted and brushed in any direction and gives the wig an amazing natural look. It'll move just like your natural hair would. Because of this time intensive process, Monofilament wigs are considered to be a high quality product and more expensive than the standard wefted cap. The benefits of wearing a wig this natural is well worth it. Another benefit of a monofilament wig is that the hand knotting makes the hair more durable and less likely to break off or slide out from the wig. That is if you treat it right. Keep in mind, the sheer material is designed to be fine and give a natural appearance, but it's not as sturdy as the rest of the wig, so treat it gently. So now Okay, so now you can see how up close what they're talking about with that monofilament top with all of that parting space and 
every time you change the part, you can still have the illusion of scalp, which is wonderful. Now, naturally, that wig is going to cost you more than a wig that has a partial monofilament top. And here is a close-up look. Uh, this is Henry Margu's Athena that I have in my hand. And Henry Margu's Athena has a full mono filament top. So you see, now this one isn't square like we saw in that picture, but all of this real estate right here, you could part in the middle and the left or the right. So full mono filament top. Okay, now let's take a look at a wig that has a partial mono filament top. And you can see that mono that partial mono top there. So you're going to be able to part the hair right there and in that part, that's where you're going to see right through to the scalp. Okay, then we have the monofilament crown and I'll share my screen with you for that one. Now this again is from Wigs Dot com and they have a, a short explanation, but you can see right there, it's a circle, which would be right at the tip, right at the crown, and that is a monofilament crown. So you would be able to see right at the crown through to the scalp. It looks like real scalp. The monofilament crown provides beautifully natural lift, while the open wefted cap keeps this piece lightweight and breathable all day long. Okay, so that's the three different types of mono filament wigs. We've got the monofilament top, we've got the monofilament part or partial, and we've got the monofilament crown. Now there's another thing called double monofilament. <laughs> Just to add to the drama. Now double monofilament is, is uh, really nicely reviewed and shown by Taz, and I'll head over there now. And Taz is reviewing Vanity by Ellen Villa, and she's going to explain the double monofilament, so let's listen. And then there's a bit of a seam leading back to the monofilament. Now, uh, this monofilament is a little bit different. So the inside layer is definitely made from a lace, more monofilament type material. And then there's a bit of a nylon sheath on the outside. And as a further review, and I'll put this link uh, down below so that you can follow along with it. The pros of the monofilament top are multi-directional parting, a lightweight material, it's cooling, it's comfortable. And then of course there's that option of the double monofilament uh, wigs, which provide even more protection for women with sensitive scalps, or perhaps you don't have any hair at all. Cons, um, more expensive and hand-tied knots than hand-tied knots that could cause uh, some irritation for some people. And now we'll move on to another category. The next thing to know is, or the next category for cap construction, is lace front caps as opposed to machine made or man made. Well, they're all man made, but lace front caps or machine made. And here is an example. Again, I have Henry Margu's um, Athena in my hand, and then you can see that she definitely has a lace front. Now, when you think of lace, you might be thinking of lacy curtains or things of that nature. This is not that. This is, it's more like, um, it's more like a netting, but it really is a lace front. And this wig that I have on today, which is, um, who are you? Uh, Beltress's Amaretto. This is a lace front wig. So it gives a very realistic impression of scalp 
and I have, uh, I'll put the uh, review down below. I have reviewed Amaretto by Beltress, and this is one of my favorite wigs. I reach for this wig again and again. She's a nice length. You can pull her back. She's very realistic. Every time I wear it, I get compliments on my hair. So that lace front, that's the benefit of the lace front. Very, very realistic. Again, a lace front cap construction will cost you more than if it's just the machine made construction at the hairline. Pros for the um, lace front wig creates the illusion of natural hairline, which is what I've just said. Very realistic looking. Not the most budget friendly. That's in your cons. And the sheer lace does need to be handled with care when taking it on and off. And my very first wig was a lace front wig. And as I said, I didn't know anything about what I was buying. I ended up sending that wig back because I didn't know how to work with the lace front. And it was a, like a $700 wig. Um, but I wish that I had that wig in my hands today. So yes, you have to be careful with the lace front. But, you know, just handle with care and it'll serve you for years to come. Okay, now the next uh, thing we want to talk about are hand-tied wigs. Again, that's uh, in, in the cap construction. Hand-tied wigs, just like they sound, are every hair is individually added to the cap. And I found a video that I thought that, that you might find interesting. I know I did. And I'm just going to play a short clip of that for you right now. It, I have learned that it takes 30 hours about 30 hours to make a hand-tied wig. You have to apprentice for about 18 months. So when you see the price for a hand-tied wig, now you understand why it's so pricey. The labor that goes into it and, and the craftsmanship that go into it. Crazy Wig Lady, again over at Wig Studio One, did a wonderful review on a hand-tied wig. I'll play a little bit of that for you right now. About a hand-tied cap, of course. This is a John Renault cap, gorgeous lace front and mono. And notice how you can see her hand right through that monofilament top. You can see the hair. So you'd be looking, it would look like when the hair's on top of that, that you can see right through to your scalp. Top, soft, soft cap. Like I said, if you have no hair, these are really good for that. They're, they're very soft against the skin. This one has an extended nape, covered of elastic, of course, stretch. And that's one of the things that I love about it because my head is average to large and most wigs come in average and they usually feel very snug on me. Um, so this kind of a wig is going to give you that wonderful stretch. I personally do not have any hand-tied wigs yet. Um, I don't think. I think I would have remembered because I would have paid for it, but... Um, I would certainly love to have one. But they are, like I said, truly luxurious and a beautiful option. So I guess the lesson here is you really have to decide what's the most important thing to you. Of course, all of it has to do with your budget. If you have the kind of budget that you, you that allows you to reach for these luxury wigs that are so realistic looking I say go for it because if I had it all to do all over again, I would rather have, um, let's say, five hand tied, beautifully done, high end wigs than a bunch of wigs that I really don't reach for because they don't fit me properly or there's too much nesting things going up at the top. They just don't re look realistic. So, my opinion is if you can afford the hand tied wigs, Go for it, because I think that they're they're just incredibly made and and beautiful. Okay, now the next category that most of us are very familiar with is the open wefted cap. It's all open. It's got these things they call tracks, and the hair is sewn onto those tracks. So you can have a combination of open wefting with lace front, with monofilament top. Uh, a lot of bells and whistles going in 
to one wig. But that's it, open wefted, when they're talking about open wefted. And they're usually very cool because there's a lot of room for air circulation. I could poke my finger through there. Very, very popular. And by the way, the reason it's called wefted is because there are wefts, wefts, W-E-F-T-S of hair that are sewn onto these tracks. So open cap as opposed to a closed cap where you don't see these wefts at all and much more cooler than a closed cap. So as you can see, there's a lot to know about wig construction, how wigs are made. We haven't even talked about uh, knots. There's a certain way that the knots are done. There's uh, there's single knots, single split knots, double knots, double split knot. And if you've ever gotten a wig where there was a knot up, up at the top or anywhere along the perimeter of that wig and the knot wasn't properly done, you know what I'm talking about. That wig goes right back. And happily, I haven't gotten too many wigs like that. I did get one. But I have included a lot of different sources here for you. The links are below. Naturally, if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them below. Questions, feel free to leave them below. If I don't know the answer, I can research it for you and try to get you the answer that you need. So thanks so much for watching. If you like, give it a like, hit the little bell icon and subscribe so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I'm sorry about the reflection in my glasses. I'm still trying to figure that one out. And I hope that you all can find the silver linings and have a wonderful day, week, month, year, whenever it is that you're seeing this. Bye-bye.